Uh, Governor Wes Moore of Maryland uh, is just coming out of a meeting with the United Command Center, closed door meeting, I should stress. The governor kind enough to join us now. Governor, very good to have you. Good morning. Thank you. What's the latest, Governor? Well, the, the latest is that the operations uh, continue. Uh, you know, there, there have been four priorities that I have laid out uh, in four directives. And first, we've got to focus on bringing a sense of closure to these families. We still have uh, four individuals who are unaccounted for and four, and four families who are still looking for a measure of closure, and we are committed to getting that to them. You know, we've got to focus on making sure we're opening up, uh, opening up these channels. Uh, this is a huge economic impact, not just to Baltimore, not just to the state of Maryland, but the economic impact that this is having on the American economy is staggering. When one of the busiest ports, one of the most effective ports in this country, has essentially been shut down. We have to make sure that we are protecting all people who are impacted by this, and that includes our port workers, our families, our heroic first responders, uh, who, I mean, literally to this day, we've got first responders who continue to work around the clock to make sure that we are accomplishing a larger mission. And the fourth piece, and important, is we are going to rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge. This is incredibly important. It is iconic. It is necessary. And so we just have to make sure that all these operations are happening simultaneously. You know, Governor, you had said, I believe, yesterday that we face a long road ahead. Um, there are others who are trying to put pen to paper and calculate that. Uh, one estimate out there has a rebuilding effort that could go up to half a billion dollars. Uh, Lloyds of London, uh, that insures a lot of these disasters, says this could be the most expensive maritime disaster ever. Uh, others saying that uh, the, the dollar is not, notwithstanding, it's going to be many years until that port and that area is back to normal. Do you agree with that? The road to recovery is going to be long, uh, it is going to be expensive, and it's going to be necessary, and we are going to get it done. Uh, I think when people talk about the impact of this port, uh, they're right. We're talking about a port that's responsible for upwards of $191 million of economic activity. We're talking about a port of Baltimore that employs over 8,000 workers directly and, and 10,000 more indirectly. Right. So this is this has a significant impact on the American economy. And we have to make sure that we're doing it right, that we're doing it safely and that we have to come to a point of conclusion where we are going to rebuild this. But we have to rebuild it right. Uh, to your point, Governor, and you've been very careful not to, to sort of opine on what might have caused this. Uh, we know about the power outage and all of that and, and, and how that might have contributed to the, the ship listing, ultimately hitting the bridge. But we do know that this ship was carrying about 4,000 metal shipping containers. 56 of them uh, were hazardous materials. How and uh, what can you tell us about that? And is there any threat of them spilling open underwater? Yeah, there, there's no current threat to the public uh, that we have for the materials. And of the, of, you're right, of the 4,000 crates, uh, we've identified that, that 56 of them uh, have some form of, of hazmat material. And when we say that, that includes things like perfumes uh, and ion right. batteries. Uh, but this has not posed any form of threat to the public. Uh, we've already been working with Unified Command, and there's over 2,700 feet of boom that has been surrounding the area, capturing any type of materials that has been laid out. And we're continuing to assess the materials that is being captured within the boom, but there is no threat uh, that, is, that has been, uh, been assessed to the public. You know, already, and it's always politics that gets involved, uh, Governor, sadly, depending on your point of view, uh, there are some in Congress who are leery of the federal government uh, taking and handling the full tab of this, uh, even though that's the understanding. And in most cases, that is how these things are dealt with. What do you think of that debate? We need Congress to move on this. And I I'm, we're not doing it because people need to do us a favor. Uh, Baltimore, Maryland, the Port of Baltimore does not need a favor. Uh, we have to understand that this port is responsible for the largest amount of car shipments, heavy vehicles, agricultural equipment in the entire country. Uh, that this port is, is, uh, is one of the leading economic drivers that we have inside of our nation's economy. And so this is not just impacting Marylanders. This is also impacting the farmer in Kentucky. This is impacting the car dealer in Michigan. 
This is impacting people all over this country. And so we need to be able to move quickly. We need to be able to move swiftly. We need to be able to move in a bipartisan fashion. It should not be lost on anybody that our entire congressional delegation, Democrats and Republicans, have all urged movement on this issue. And that's the type of momentum and that, frankly, is the, the, the type of frame that all of Congress needs to take on the urgency of this moment. You know, Governor, um uh, this is my thought here. I, I mean, I'm no shipping expert, and I, I understand the, the, the worst maritime disaster and expense and all of that. Uh, but, but what do you think of just the role of large ships, period? This was an exceptionally large cargo ship. Uh, that's, of course, an exceptionally large port that can handle that. But I'm thinking how these ships are getting bigger and bigger, Governor. And then I think of the icon of the seas, the Royal Caribbean ship, the world's largest, three times bigger than the Titanic, I guess. There's a ship coming next year, a passenger ship that's going to dwarf that one. Do you think this is a danger or something to watch, that these things don't cause these disasters? I, I want to predicate that. But does it worry? Does it concern you? Well, we have to make sure we're focusing on, on safety in everything that we do. There's, there's no higher responsibility than any of us as chief executives have than making sure that our citizens are safe, our citizens are secure, and that our critical infrastructure is built correctly. I also know that we've got to make sure we're keeping our economic engine going. Uh, how we are producing our goods, how we're supporting our small businesses and our large and our, and our large industry, how we're making sure that the United States, uh, that our economy continues to be the economic engine of the world, it's going to be crucial. And that's going to require, require multiple means, a multimodal uh, transportation entity to be able to support that. So it will include our maritime ministry. We're grateful that we have such a strong maritime ministry. We're grateful that the Port of Baltimore serves as such an important factor in that maritime ministry. And so I believe Leave in the growth of it. We just need to make sure that it's being done safely. Got it. Governor, I know you're a pretty busy fellow, to put it mildly. Uh, thank you. Be well. Be safe. Uh, Governor Westmore of Maryland. God bless you. Thank you. Right back at you, Governor. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.